Hey everybody, you know what time it is. It's time for another release video. 3.1 is out. We have a lot jam-packed into this release, so I'm not gonna go into great detail on how to use all of the cool new features that we've added. The tips, the tricks, those will come in a following video, and I promise I've got a lot more of those coming. But today, I wanna focus on the key features of 3.1 and make sure that you know about all the cool new things coming with the release. So let's dig in. The first major feature of 3.1 is workflows. We mentioned in the last video that a node editor was coming. What we didn't share was our full plans for workflows, a new capability and a core function of the Invoke AI platform going forward. I'll go ahead and get the gallery out of the way real quick so you can take in the nodes in all their glory. But if you've used the experimental version of this release, you'll notice that the 3.1 version is a significant improvement. We've talked with countless professionals who are using this technology in their day-to-day -day workflows. And for the generation of most production assets, a very deliberate and sometimes complicated workflow is ultimately necessary in order to generate the content that's needed. With Invoke AI's Workflow Builder, you now have a way to capture this workflow in an easily reusable way so that you can generate not just this image, but the next thousand images exactly the same way across your team. But what we've also learned talking to professionals who are using this technology is that not everybody really wants to use a complicated graph building solution like this. And that is what Workflows solves for. As I mentioned, I won't go into the deep dive of building out this graph entirely on this video. We'll do that on a follow-on. But a couple of features that I wanna highlight because they're incredibly powerful ways that the community can create and share these graphs in an easily usable way is the workflow linear view. When you're building out a graph that you intend to share with others or that you wanna reuse easily yourself, you can right click the fields that you intend to most often change and make those easily accessible in a simple linear UI. So let's go ahead and add our positive prompt and our negative prompt to our linear UI. And in this specific generation, I may be okay with the model being the same. Um, let's say I have a model that I'm using at my studio, but what I do want to change because this is a seamless graph is I want to make sure that the seamless uh, Y axis and seamless X axis are available and toggleable on the workflow. Now, when I save this workflow and share it with others, or if I embed my workflow, inside the latency to image node, which saves the final image. This workflow can be reused and the most important things that need to change to reuse that workflow efficiently can be done using this UI. Let's go ahead and generate to see what we get. You'll notice that as the image was generating, the graph execution was visualized. The status of each graph can be seen in the top right corner. And if you ever wanna see the output of any individual node, you can click on that node to see its outputs. If it's uh, text or, you know, in this case, conditioning, it'll show the entire object that's being passed. If it's an image, you'll be able to see that image preview there. I've also added a current image node to my workflow so that I can preview whatever I've got selected right now. Uh, so this is our surreal, curvy, rainbow, magic, sparkle, unicorn pattern that we uh, obviously needed uh, for the project we're working on. When you're saving a workflow, you can add some additional details to the workflow, including the name, a version, your author name, and a contact information, whether that's a Discord or GitHub handle, any tags you'd like to be associated with the workflow, a short description, and notes. All this information will be included in the workflow as it's shared out. Now, in this case, with a seamless workflow, uh, let's say, for example, I'm a game studio that's trying to create textures for my games, and I want to have a very easy, uh, reusable texture generator. What I do is I probably include some amount of predefined texture prompt, which I'll go ahead and paste in here, and then maybe some sort of placeholder. Once done with that, we would download our workflow JSON and share that file out. Or as always, if we want to embed that workflow, the image itself can pass that metadata on 
and be loaded directly into Invoke's workflow system. Let's go ahead and generate some green grass. And for the sake of showing you the process of adding a new node, you'll notice that my noise node here uh, has a fixed seed. Uh, I'll press the space bar to open up our node search window, type in a random integer, and we'll go ahead and add that in. Clean this up a little bit. And if you ever want to select multiple nodes at the same time, you can shift and select and then move all of those together. Well, uh, let's go ahead and see what we get. Now we have our grass image, which we can use or needed or send this workflow to someone else to have them use it. The workflow builder in and of itself is worthy of its own release, but we've been hard at work. We've got even more. So let's look at the unified canvas. Our unified canvas has had some significant upgrades since 3.0. Our in-painting process was one of the most complicated nodes, and we've done a significant amount of refactoring to make this not only just a clean piece of code, but also more powerful than it's ever been. Let's take a look at the details. We'll go ahead and do some in-painting, but I'm also gonna use this opportunity to call out and use every new feature that we've added into the canvas. So it's gonna take us a little bit of time. First things first, let's open up our control net settings. You'll notice that the control net is now available on the canvas, but we've got a couple of options here that make it easy to use. Uh, one of which is gonna be this import image from canvas. What that's going to do is it's going to take your image from the canvas and pop that in as a control net input. Now, the trick here is that you can also use it to save the box region only. So if, for example, we're doing some incredibly fine tuned details on a close up here, we can actually have that small snip brought in as a control net. So I'll do that now. And you'll notice that I've got my kind of canny edge map pulled in from this small snipped image. And so now I'll go ahead and brush in my mask. What you'll also notice is that all of the settings that are related to ensuring that the in-painted image looks seamless, like it was part of the original image, have all been brought together underneath compositing settings. This includes two steps one of which is the mask adjustment. This is how we bring the image in and kind of blur it together. And the second is our coherence pass. The coherence pass is a second image to image run that is done as the image is kind of being brought together, which is critical for the quality of results that you'll find coming out of Invoke's new canvas. So we'll take one last look at our denoising strength and make sure that it's high enough to get us some different details. Uh, remember, we've already got our control nut here, so we can get a little bit more free on our denoising strength. Uh, let's even push it up to an eight, and we should hopefully find that we still are maintaining our structure. Right. Our wizard is looking pretty detailed and quite nice. With that demonstration out of the way, we'll go ahead and clear the canvas, delete out our control nut and we'll switch to our SDXL model. With the release of 3.1, SDXL is now capable of using every feature that I just showed you on the canvas. We can do text to image generation, image to image, in painting, control net, LoRa's, everything that you've come to expect that you can do can now be done directly on the unified canvas with the SDXL model. So I, want, so I won't walk through this one live and we'll turn this on and we'll do a little mini overdrive here as I use SDXL to generate a new image.
Now that we've covered the major updates to the canvas, just a couple of other updates that we've made in 3.1, which will make your life easier as you're using the tool, especially if you're a professional looking to use this for your work. So we'll go ahead and head back to the text to image tab, where we'll cover a couple of the other feature enhancements in 3.1. Very often as a professional, when you're using these tools, you probably find yourself looking to bring in external information into a control net and easily turn that into a generation. One of the big friction points there is finding the right dimensions for that, which is why in 3.1, when you add an image to your control net, you have the option here using the small ruler icon to set the control image dimensions to your width and height. That'll actually bring those directly up to your width and height. Now you might want to generate something that's larger or smaller, but keep the same aspect ratio. And you'll now notice that there's a lock ratio icon that'll keep your width and height the same aspect ratio as you scale up and down. So we'll go ahead and lock this and scale it up just a little bit to take advantage of the fact that this model can generate at higher resolutions. And we'll go ahead and update our prompt to an elephant on a multicolored rainbow adventure of interactive node-based workflows. And we'll go ahead and generate. Now that elephant is at a party I want to be at. For the sake of generating a couple of images here, let's go ahead and turn this up to five and generate five more. Now that we've generated a few, we need to go in and pick our favorite. So we'll take a look at these. And that first one that we generated still kind of has a special place in my heart. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is hover over the image in my board and hit the star icon. That star icon will actually bring that up to the very top. And as I generate more pictures, it's going to stay there. This is a great way as you're developing different concepts within a single board of marking those that you want to keep. And then once you're done with a session or Let's be honest, probably three months later when you're trying to save some hard drive space, you can use the shift key when selecting multiple images, right click and delete all of those images at the same time. As you let out that sweet, sweet sigh of relief at having easily managed your generations, remember that these updates are brought to you by a combination of the team at Invoke and our open source community. A huge shout out to the members of the community who helped us build 3.1, who helped support our users and Discord, and gave us feedback and comments as we were building out the Workflow Builder. We're committed to making this the best way to use this technology as a professional, whether you're an indie creator or a large studio looking to co-create with AI. I know I keep saying this, but there is even more coming. We've got a lot of work to do to realize the vision of Invoke AI. We're excited for you to use it, we hope you'll share your workflows with each other. And if you're a developer who's looking to contribute to the open ecosystem of nodes and capabilities of the platform, we encourage you to get in touch on Discord. We'll see you next time and keep an eye out for new videos to break down nodes, control nets, and more coming soon.